always has a song that fits in with what it is I'm going to talk about. And it's so appropriate. And it's just what we needed to get going. Thank you so much, Dana. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I haven't been here for a year and a half. And I really haven't spoken anywhere for over a year. And this is a, an amazing sign for me to be able to be up and be here and to be what I'm going to explain some things later, but and to be pain free. Um, I'm just excited. Uh, I'm going to talk today about three words. I'm going to give you all the explanations that I give you are from the revealing word, which is a metaphysical dictionary written by Charles Fillmore. Uh, and those three words are peace, faith, and miracles. I'm starting with peace because that's the place where we should go first to calm ourselves and put ourselves in a state where we can actually hear the wisdom, the wisdom that is within us. And the wisdom that is within us is called God. And also, peace is the Advent word for this week. Now, the meaning from the revealing word is Harmony and tranquility derived from awareness of the Christ consciousness. Steadfast affirmations of peace will harmonize the world, body structure, and open the way to attainment of health conditions in mind and body. Now, this next paragraph, I'm good, I'm not that good. Uh, <laughs> um, the next paragraph is so appropriate for right now. Please listen to it carefully. Until world peace is based on the divine law of love, and this law incorporated into the pact of peace, as well as into the minds of those who sign the pact, there will be no permanent peace. Each one of the words I'm going to talk about today, you could do a whole talk on each one of them. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but they are so powerful and they're so important. When you put yourself in a state of peace, and I want to let you know that each and every one of you are capable of doing this in the most extreme mean times, the extreme times. You have that ability within you to call on peace. Because I'm going to tell you, and you all are good and grown people mostly. <laughs> when you don't call on peace, you know what comes. The main thing is you cannot hear the good voice within you that gives you the direction. You know how you'll have some kind of a disagreement with someone, and then as you are driving home and you get home or wherever you're going, you have these thoughts, I could have said this, I could have said that, that would have been so much better. And oftentimes we're not talking about stuff that's mean or difficult. It's just that these were been kinder or decent words to bring peace to yourself and to the situation. When you put yourself in a state of peace, how do you do that? Well, you may not believe this, but all you do is decide to do it. It's a mind thing. It's mental. All you have to do is say, peace be still, to remind yourself of who you are. And you know the most amazing thing happens? All of a sudden, the situation doesn't seem so bad anymore. It puts a softer edge on what you're dealing with. So in the when you look at the whole body of 
what you might be concerned about on that day or worried about, all of a sudden, that thing that's so extreme in you becomes so less important. If you can find the tools within you to call on peace, because only you can do that, your life will be totally different. We meet people and we describe people certain ways. And one of the way people get described is, that person is so peaceful. No matter what happens, they just stay calm. And you know, they made that choice to do that. And you're capable of doing the same thing. Because we're in a world today where each and every one of us, every single one of us, if we can express out into the universe the energy of peace, collectively, we become the mass consciousness. It's, we feel so hopeless sometimes when we look at some of the situations that are showing up, especially in our country. And you feel, what in the world can I do? You can express peace, because that's expressing love. There's not a word I'm going to talk about today that doesn't have a foundation and basis of love. Because that's the real tool. That's the real key. The question is, what would love do? Now, that sounds like a silly question when you just put it out there by itself, but it really isn't, because you are love. So I'm saying, what would you do? You want to see this change? You want us to become a society of loving people who care about each other? When we become collectively the mass consciousness of that, peace and love, what we do is we draw to us those individuals who also want that same goal. And those are the people that we send to create our laws, to administer our country. You may not think you're that important, you just that one person, but always imagine yourself is one person joined with another person joined with another person. Know that you're not the only one striving for peace. This is a season of all of these words. This is the season of peace, faith, and miracles. Peace sets you up so that you can really practice faith, and peace and faith lead to miracles. We're going to talk about that. So remember, law number one, love is all there is. It lies under everything, everything we do, because that's who we are. I don't care how much you resist it, and you know we good at that. We, we, we're excellent at resisting love. And I'm, I mean loving ourselves. Who are the hardest? We're, we're hard on us. Look, oh, look at that. that. What am I going to do about this? Oh, my goodness, I'm so terrible. Uh, you have to stop that. We have to stop that. We have to start with us. I am the most important thing that I know. OK? I am woman, hear me roar. And I feel good about that. The next word is faith. And it's a simple explanation. Faith in God is the substance of existence. To have faith in God is to have the faith of God. Hmm. To have faith in God is to have the faith of God. Hmm. Why is it so hard for us to go there? We're trying to figure out I need to do this. 
what can we do? What can they do? Why are people doing it? Why is this going on? Why is that? What is this in my life? I need help. Blah, 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 blah. You know how it goes. And then all of a sudden, faith might slip in and say, give it to me. Give it to me. I got this. Faith is more than mere belief. It is the very substance of that which is believed. It works by love. So, let me talk a little bit about faith. In March of this year, I was getting very tired. I got up one Friday morning and I made up the bed and I was exhausted. And I went, <laughs> Even I shouldn't be exhausted from making up the bed because I can get exhausted. And you all might not believe this, but I was driving Uber. I was getting ready to go to, I was gonna go to work that day. It's a good thing about driving Uber, you set your own schedule. And this voice just kept coming to me. Go to the emergency room. I'm thinking I'm tired, I'm not that tired. But the voice came again. Now, this is unusual because what my experience has been is when you get guidance from your angels, they don't tell you but once. Either you listen or you don't. Okay? Either way has consequences. If you listen, you get the better ones. <laughs> Finally, around 2 o'clock, and I just kept messing around and messing around, but something was just nagging at me. And I went to the emergency room. I didn't get home for another six weeks. I had a triple bypass. I had three blockages. I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything about medicine in terms of what makes this, well, you learn, but of, you know, anatomy. I know outer anatomy. I kind of know where the kidneys and the liver might be. I probably would get that wrong, but I'm not a doctor, okay? Where can I go but faith? I had to have faith. I had to know not once was I afraid. I had to know that no matter what, it was going to be okay. And I had some experiences. Um, I had the, the bypass, I went into rehab for a couple of weeks, and then I was home. Well, I recovered from that heart surgery beautifully. As I was coming into the end of that recovery, I was experiencing extreme pain in my right foot. And we have been playing with that since, oh, May. Now, I thought my faith experience for the year would be the heart surgery. No, it was this foot. I have never in my entire life experienced such pain. Pain that would not let me sleep sometime for two or three days. I didn't want to take the heart medication, but I wound up getting the medical treatment that I needed for it. And I've had about five angiograms and three or four angioplasties to open up arteries in my foot. I've had surgery on that foot. And just this week, I, maybe two days ago, because it was so, it just stood out so. I took some pain medications in the, hmm, early that morning. 10 o'clock that night, I realized I hadn't taken any more pain medication, and my foot wasn't hurting. And I want you all to know my foot wasn't hurting. And look, I'm going to show you something. See, I got, a, I got a black sock on here. I could not, in the, before last week, I could not put a sock over the dressing because it made it too tight. I don't feel anything. I'm good. I'm good. I was good all the way through it. 
I think what happened was I thought I was okay. I thought I would heal. Oh, it challenges you. Because there were times when I was like, now look here, this has got the end, okay? It's like, am I ever going to be able to stand up or lay down without my foot hurting? And um, the vascular surgeon did uh, angioplasty on me a couple of weeks, well, a week and a half ago, and he says there were a couple more arteries that we needed to open up. He opened those arteries and that, the blood started flowing and healing because that's what it does. When your circulation is not good, whatever organ that is feeding doesn't get fed. And there are all kinds of consequences behind that. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to tell you I had nowhere to go. Now, I'm a minister, and I know about faith. And I try to the best of my ability to practice it. But there are times when God sits you down and says, you're going to learn about faith. <laughs> Your name is not Reverend Pat. Your name is Pat. Then you're going to learn about faith. And I wanted to share that experience in, in line with talking about faith because so often we go on the human side. And the human side wants to do, do. Do, do, do. But guess what? We are not human doings. We're human beings. Who are we going to be? I chose to be the thing called faith. I don't know where else to go. And I'm going to tell you, it was one of the most glorious experiences. There were times when my foot would hurt, and I would cry. And in the midst of crying, I would be saying, thank you, God because I know it was a healing in there somewhere. Thank you, God. What good would it have done me to just cry without a purpose? Yana Van Zandt told me that. <laughs> she said, when you cry, cry with a purpose and then just have a ball, just ball it all out. And ex that's exactly what I did. That was the ugly cry. Like, oh, oh, it's very so bad, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, help me. <laughs> That's the best way to teach you about faith. I don't have a problem with sharing my experiences because it's, that's part of the purpose that we have. Them. We have to teach each other how to live. Each and every one of us is our brother or our sister. We have to see the world that way. And we have to teach each other the good that we learn, the experiences. You do mind if I share something with you you need to say? And you feel like, because that little voice in you is saying, share that, share that. Oh, no, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear that. I'm not going to talk about that. With Just ask them, do you mind if I share something with you? And you can share those experiences. We teach each other. So as you can see, I could go on and on and on on faith, because that's my favorite one. My prayer, just a few days ago, I had a talk with God. I said, look here, God, I gave you 2017. I've been down for the count <laughs> since March. Now, 2018, I need to get up and go. And it was two days later when my foot stopped hurting. Because God is my father. And I can talk to God the same way I talk to my father. And never forget that. And then, of course, after I told God exactly what I needed him to do for me, I said, thank you very much. And I meant that. Because I love God. I never, ever, ever feel alone. I have 
other things in my life that challenge me, but being alone, that's not one of them. Because I know better. I know I'm never alone. I'm never by myself. You know, we have so much around us that we can't see, but they're there. We have angels. How many people in here believe in angels? When I moved down here to Fredericksburg, <laughs> uh, my husband and I was looking for an apartment. And I had a little apartment book. You know, they have the little apartment books. And I said, well, this place looks nice. And it was the Mark at Salem Station. We didn't really know Fredericksburg that well. But things, and you know, I have to tell you, at that time, credit wasn't good. I was really concerned whether I was going to get a place. I'm driving down Route 1, and there was a sign that said the mark, and it pointed that way, down Harrison Road. So I said, turn here. And then something, I said, go back. There was something strange about that sign. I went back, there was no sign. I made him park. I walked to see if the sign had fell down in the ditch. <laughs> there was no sign. Who put that sign there? <laughs> Test. Somebody put that sign there. And it was an angel. I went, oh. I knew, and I want to tell you something. Not only did I not get the apartment, when the woman called me to tell me I had the apartment, she said, you're just the kind of person we want to move in here. Now, I got a couple of more angel experiences, but I'm going to leave you all with that one. <laughs> Miracles. Miracles or effects in the physical world beyond or out of the ordinary course of things deviating from the known laws of nature or transcending our knowledge of these laws. Now that's Webster, okay? But the really revealing word says, in reality, miracles are events that take place as a result of the operation of a higher law. All true action is governed by law. Nothing just happens. All happenings are the result of cause and can be explained under the law of cause and effect. This one's real simple. You are the miracle. You create the miracle. You use the tool to create. We have an amazingly powerful tool to create. That's called our mind, our thoughts. That's our tool. I don't know about you all, but I forget to use that tool. And the creation that comes from forgetting is very haphazard. But when I use that tool and I focus, I, I'm going to share something with you. And it's about my sister, and I hope she don't mind. It's good. My sister is the example of focusing on something, and it just shows up. I've seen it happen time and time and time again. I'm glad she's my sister. I'm hoping one day she'll touch me and it'll pass on through. But <laughs> it never fails for her, never. That has not been the lesson that she came here to learn. Because she has some others, both of us do. But that's not it. And it's an amazing testament, an amazing thing to watch be expressed. You know, and it doesn't come from her doing years of study or anything. This is naturally who she is. I want a house, and she gets a house. I need a new car and new car. And sometimes the, the, the situations around where she gets are like, it's literally like somebody knocked on the door and said, did you order this? <clears throat> yes, I did. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you are the miracle. I'm not saying there are no miracles. I'm saying you are it. We're thinking miracles are something outside of us. But I'm going to say this. Without peace, 
without faith, without love, you will never see a miracle. So your homework for this week is to work on those things. All of us have little holes in each one of them somewhere. If we can work on them, we can begin to see the miracle. It's an amazing thing. It's a good thing. So remember, put yourself in a state of peace first. <clears throat> Have faith that all that is of God is good. That includes you. Have faith that you are never alone. And whatever the issues are, no matter how difficult, God is there. God is there, and God sends his angels to protect you and take care of you. I had so many experiences, the synchronicity of things that happened. Doctors that, I had one experience where the first vascular surgeon I went to, I was going to a wound clinic, and they said to me, where are you going for this, you know, the, 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 for this circulation problem? And I told them, they said, oh, no, 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 no. Did you know that one of the doctors there doesn't have a license that owns the place and he works under another doctor and blah, blah, blah. Here's the way who we want you to go see. Now, let's say this is a Friday. On Sunday, my foot went off the chart. And I said, I have to go to the emergency room. I can't take this anymore. I'm going to have to get some kind of pain control. I went to the emergency room and, and they did all kind of tests. And they kept me, because, you know, I'm old. And uh, they figured, you know, I let her go, and she's old, and she's already had a heart surgery this year. Well, it might be the wrong thing to do, so we're going to keep her overnight. And um, you're not going to believe this. The PA, a PA came in to see me from vascular surgery. He had referred me, the wound clinic had referred me to a doctor that was way out in, in, in St. Mary's County, which was fine because he was a good doctor. But what he said to me is, I'm going to look at some things with you and then I'll turn this over to my partner who works out of Southern Maryland Hospital. And that's the hospital I went to. The very next day, who walks in my room but his PA? The one he was going to refer me to. The one where I was going to have to get this test and that test and then finally go see. The very next day, I became his patient. That's synchronicity. But it's synchronicity based on faith. Because the first, the thought I had through all of this was, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> One day, I'm going to be back in business. I know this. So, you are the miracle, and I'm going to tell you, I know I am. I know I'm the miracle. To be standing here, I don't have my cane, I'm leaning on this, but I'm not really in pain. I'm still a little unsteady, you know, but I'm just so grateful to be experiencing a normal life today. I have two people with me that I love to the moon and back. So whatever I do with these, I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for my friends. I'm grateful for my family. I have a very loving family. And they've been good to me. And I have scared the bejesus out of them this year. <laughs> and my sister didn't think I knew that, but, but we have the same doctor and the doctor told on her. <laughs> My intern has said, you know you scared your sister to death. <laughs> you know, nobody told me, you know, but I, that's how I found out. So do your homework. Fill in the gaps. Work on the edges, the rough edges, and make them smooth. Love each other. Even when challenge to love is the last thing that you want to show up. Do it anyway. 
It's like the balm of Gilead. It'll soothe your soul. I want to thank you all today for allowing me to share my message. I was so excited about doing this today. I really couldn't sleep last night because it's representing me starting my normal life again. And that is just, a, uh, it's a Christmas miracle, it's a blessing. It really is. So thank you all so very much for being here and being kind enough to listen. Thank you.